We can make a rubbish and a recycling. Oh, did we throw these away or are these new? Oh, bother. These are new. Always acquiring and never discarding, Vasula is a hoarder. Don't care if it's falling apart. No, oh, stop getting stressed out. Just I do get stressed room. out. Daughter Jasmine has had a lifelong struggle with Vasula's condition. All through my life, I felt like my mum's stuff was more important than me. I tried to make her choose, and she couldn't choose because it was not a choice. It was purely a compulsion that she couldn't control. But Jasmine's finally persuaded her mum to try and clear the house for good. Help me make a decision. I'm playing with it now. <laughs> yeah. My mum is an amazing mum. She's loving, caring, she's interested in what we do. And, you know, she's a, a fantastic mum. She's just rubbish at housework. Jasmine grew up in this house where her mother, Vasula, still lives. The first room we come to is the uh, not living room. Not a lot of space. There's a nice open fireplace, but we can't see it. There's um, pretty things, and there's all sorts of useful things that are of no use. The first things that I collected were tiny doll's house things that were found in derelict houses that had been bombed during the war in London. I was about five or six and they were precious and I kept them in a box, but I didn't keep them in the house, I kept them in the cold bunker. The sudden death of Vasula's father when she was just three meant an unsettled childhood as the family moved between their native Cyprus and England. Each time we moved from one country to another, there were lots of things that we couldn't take, so they'd be lost. And I don't know if that contributed to hoarding, but it's possible that, you know, losing your precious little toys when you're a child means that you, you feel vulnerable, that you're going to have things taken from you. The cooker's here and the sink is here. It's full of stuff. When I have to cook, I just have to move everything off of some surface in order to cook, or just cut things up in the air and in the pan. Basula's daughter, Jasmine, is a television presenter who finds beautiful homes for people to live in. I like to vacuum everything. I vacuum the chairs, I vacuum the sofas, um, the kitchen worktops. <laughs> this away now. I've had my fix for the day. <laughs> Jasmine spent many years trying to get Vasula to clear the house with little success. As a child, it's impossible to cope with that kind of situation. You just feel ashamed and embarrassed. You know, you can't have friends over. I wanted to keep it a secret and also, when people had come round, you know, people might make comments or, you know, might say, you know, why don't you just tidy up? And we had always tried to tidy up and had always tried to throw things out. And that still happens to this day. It's like, well, why don't you just clear it out? Why don't you just throw everything away? Because it doesn't work. We do you think we haven't tried that before. This is the only bath. There's another loo downstairs, but there's no other bath. The room that was originally my own room is through there. I've slept in whatever space has been available. I've either slept on the floor, on a mattress, in the doorway. I had a mattress that came out from that room to here. It's jewellery, all these bits and pieces. I don't like other people touching my things because I feel that, especially some things are quite fragile and I, and I feel 
Are they going to be careful or are they going to break it and then say, oh, it was already broken? Or are they going to take it? I think this is all going to fall down, you know. Stay. Really, nobody understands this disease. You can't understand it unless you're living it, unless it is your reality. I can't understand it. I still don't understand it, but I accept it because I know that if my mum had a choice, she wouldn't want to live like this. Vasula brought up her five children in the house. 13-year-old son Cameron still lives at home, but this hasn't always been the case. We had a situation where mum was told that this environment was not safe for a child to live in, and he went to live with my sister. It was quite a long time, it was a couple of years. And then Cameron wanted to move back home. Not even Cameron's room is safe from Vasula's hoarding. His space has been encroached upon more and more by me, and now he's got to the point where he's a big lad and he needs a space to, to grow and thrive. Can I throw away the Financial Times from 2010? That's Cameron's. All right, I'll ask him what he wants out of it. Now Cameron's back home, Jasmine has convinced Vasula to clear the house for his sake. You think I'm going to want a copy with Financial Times? Well, Mum asked me to ask you, so I'm asking. No. I don't want him to have to go through his teenage years experiencing the same kind of things that I did. I think I only really became aware that my mum was a hoarder and that it wasn't just being messy only a couple of years ago, really recently, um, considering that I've lived in that kind of situation for most of my life. Jasmine has struggled to get effective treatment for her mum but is now hopeful that a team of psychologists who are studying hoarding may be able to help. I'm hoping that the doctor that we're meeting today, he's got like a magic key or something that can unlock the, the problem and that can set mum free from it. That's what I really want. Hoarding is currently considered a form of obsessive compulsive disorder, but Dr. Matash Coles believes it's a condition in its own right. The hope is that the research we and others are doing is that this will be recognized as an official disorder and this will trigger a lot of uh, investment and research and development of better treatments for this condition. Dr. Matash Coles and his colleague have come to assess for Sula. No bubble mix. Well, there is a little bit. Lovely. Would you perhaps want to tell us um, what's the story behind any, any of those items, perhaps one of these uh, figurines? The Eiffel Tower. Well, I, I have been to the Eiffel Tower, but I didn't get this there. I got this in a charity shop for next to nothing because you can't afford to buy them in, in France, in Paris. And I've got several French friends that it kind of reminds me of. One of them has passed away last year, and it kind of reminds me of him as well. My friend's been cremated, so there's no uh, nowhere to kind of um, no burial place where you can imagine you can talk to them. Mm. This would be very difficult to get rid of as well. It came from my mother's kitchen, and we made it into a, a necklace for a, a fancy dress. And if I had to get rid of it, I would just be, you know, remembering my mum. And I would also like to ask you whether there is new stuff coming into the house all the time. Yes, but I'm resisting a lot as well. It's a very secretive problem. Totally. I, I really feel like I would like to deal with it. Is there anything that family members, any tools that, that I could use, say something to help, like 
tap into what she's thinking or to break this sort of attachment or anything. There isn't a lot in terms of treatment options in this country, um, well, anywhere in the world actually, mm -hmm. just simply because the disorder does not officially exist. Once the disorder exists, then things should change a lot for the better. I really want to take this on board and, and help my, improve my life, help myself to have a better home and a better life, and for my children as well. Was, what was very hard to hear is that, is that there's very little help for people even though you know someone's got this problem, you're just looking for answers. And there aren't any out there. Nobody knows the answer. With very little treatment available, it's left to Jasmine and her siblings to confront their mum's problem head on. Remember when we had Christmas dinner in my bedroom? Yeah. Oh yeah! I had forgotten about that. My room was the only room where there was space. <laughs> <laughs> so we had... Just we had, a tidy one out of yeah, So we had Christmas dinner in my bedroom. It was ridiculous. It was fine, we didn't mind. Well, I didn't, we thought it was normal. Yeah. Well, everybody had Christmas dinner in the bedroom. <laughs> We've wanted to start the process a million times before, but this is the first time she's ever seemed to be ready. So I think, you know, well, you've got to strike while the iron's hot. Do you know we're all here to support you and we're all do anything we can to help you? <laughs> I was thinking today, it wouldn't be so bad if the house burnt down and everything was gone, then I could start again. But in a way, you know, it doesn't have to burn down to be all gone. It can be all gone through choice. So. Through your own choice. I think that would be better. I mean, I'm sure we've all thought about burning the house down at one time or another. <laughs> Put it in the box. If they like them, they can have them. Over the next two months, Jasmine and Vasula are hoping to clear the hall, living room, kitchen, bathroom, and two bedrooms. This stuff I thought I wanted to keep. It's really hard for me to get rid of anything, any of this stuff, but I want to, it's just hard to do it. So what are you sorting stuff? I'm sorting and resorting by the look of it. I've handled all these once and I've decided I don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> With virtually no space in the house to sort through things, Jasmine has rented some storage nearby. We've tried throwing everything out before, and I can't throw stuff away that belongs to Mum because she would just feel violated and she would want to replace it immediately. So it's totally counterproductive. The way we have to get let go of possessions is that Mum has to work through every single item and she has to have control of it. Oh, oh. God, couldn't you co collect something light? I'm hoping that I can keep everything I want to keep and still have a tidy and livable house. So I'm so not... So you don't think you've got too much stuff? That's not what I said. You're, you're trying to put words in my mouth. I'm not. It sounds to me like you're almost backing out and now changing your mind. No, so I'm not like, backing out. I'm not know, changing I'm, my actually, mind. I want to keep everything. I'm not saying I want to keep everything. The problem is that the hallway is just one part of the house. Yeah. Well, and I might part. want to keep 90% of what's in the hallway, but it doesn't mean I want to keep 90% of what's in the bedroom. One, two, three, up. Oh. It's like the heaviest trolley in the world. Sell. Keep. I would like to keep my recipe books. All of them. And this one 
Maybe not all of them. How many have you got? I, about 5,000. Right. I think I'd like to keep the biology book too because it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Have a look at the ratio that you've... Uh-oh. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> it's depressing, really, because, you know, I just know that she wants to keep most things. And if we carry on going at this rate, I'll be 135 by the time the house is clear. It's a pound a piece, all right? OK. Because they're too nice to sell for 50p. After two weeks of sorting, Vasula has agreed to let go of a car boot full of possessions she's prepared to sell. You've got some nice plates there. Well done. <laughs> You're welcome. Christmas cards we got. They're very, very special. And more Christmas cards. Yeah. You gonna have a look? It's good, isn't it, buying Christmas cards in April? <laughs> I'm selecting some Christmas cards for myself before they sell them all. Jasmine's brother Andy is helping out on Vasula's stall. She's sifting through her own stuff that she's brought here. It's not unheard of for her to sort of give things away. She, she's given stuff away to the, uh, to, to the Salvation Army and then it's like her own stuff that she took there three days previously goes back to the Salvation Army and goes, well, actually, I can't live without this and, and pays to take it away again. So, so uh, sort of expected, you know, sort of we, we knew that she wouldn't let go of everything straight away. I'll give it to you for six fifty. Why not seven? It's, it's a good price, seven. Actually, to leave the fifty p out. I think I'll just keep this one because I really love it. <laughs> she doesn't want to sell anything. Six fifty is where we meet. We said seven. You said six. You should be happy. It's better to sell these you items than not when sell. It, when it, when I'm not just getting away. angry. Look, no, don't, don't tell me to go away. Give me this, like, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, is a uh, bonus. <laughs> and it's six fifty, not six now. So you get that for nothing. I'm sorry about my mum. I feel embarrassed of, of it, to be honest. I do feel embarrassed. That was ridiculous, by the way. Uh, at the end of the day, you might as well sell the stuff, not quibble over 50p. Let her have it, you know? It doesn't matter. 50p, we're not here to make money, are we? Aren't we? We're here to get rid of the mountain of stuff that you've got. We're coming away with less stuff than I thought we would. So, so I'm surprised about that rather than the other way. Why I'm surprised. We sabotage every sale that we had. No, no, only a couple of people that were trying to take us for a ride. One, two, three. I'm just exhausted now. And I've probably got about 40 quid in my little pouch to, uh, to show for all the hard work. So I'd rather give her 40 quid. I'd rather give her 40 quid and buy all that stuff and do, it, do with it whatever I wanted. But that's no good. I've offered her money for her stuff before. I said, you know, I'll give you this amount of money and you give me everything in your house. But she wouldn't agree to that because she knows that I might just ditch some of the things that she loves. Not only does Vasula find it difficult to get rid of things, she constantly acquires new belongings. At my worst, I would be bringing in, say, four or five carrier bags of secondhand stuff or new stuff, it doesn't matter, a day or a couple of times a week at least. It's like placing a bet and winning. When you go out and you find something, you know, you've won, you found more treasure. So you take it home. Um, but at the end of the day, it's um, counterproductive because there's so much stuff that it um, can't use any of it. I bought these yesterday. So there's two kiddies books, one self-help, one decorating book, 
when Jasmine phoned me up, I was still there. And she said, where are you? And, and I told her. And Jasmine said, oh, Mum, I'm not supposed to bring books in. I'm working so hard to help you empty the place. Because she is working so hard. So, sorry, Jasmine. See those sticks in that um, bag? I was thinking, they'd be useful for propping my plants up. Mine and my mum's relationship is completely dominated by the hoarding. That's all we talk about. And it's been that way for a while now. Now, what are you doing? Look, this thing on its own is about five quid to buy. There was a time when we couldn't even broach the subject because it would just end in tears every time. And then we just didn't really talk much, or we just talked about the weather. I felt very much like a homeless person over the last few years because my home has been occupied by the possessions. Jasmine and her mum have been working on clearing the house for a month now, but have ground to a halt. If I had a bigger space and I put everything out, instead of being that way, it was that way, and I could see it all, I could then decide, oh, I don't actually want all that stuff, and I just want this one or this one. Like a football field size of yeah, space. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's a radical step but they both agree to move the contents of the living and dining rooms to a nearby warehouse. Vasula now has to decide what she really needs to keep. I feel I'm ready for it to happen. But it's, it doesn't stop it being stressful. Do you want some more bags? <laughs> There's more. It's really weird. It's really nice, actually. I think the last time I was in this room, I was probably just a, still a child. Every Christmas, we had the Christmas tree here, and we used to get up at the, you know, before the crack of dawn and sit down here. And we would, um, you know, we weren't allowed to open our presents until seven o'clock. That was the rule. If you, if you just, if you be careful, madam. Even though it's a bit of rubbish to you, oh, no, okay. it's still very useful for what I want to use it for. I honestly wish that it could all just drive away and never come back and I never have to deal with it again. But obviously, Mum would kill me. If it was all gone, never to be seen again, would it really matter? I hope this isn't a plan that you've cooked up. Oh. I'm not, I'm just, the question popped into my head and I just wondered how you would feel. If the van drove off and never reappeared, I just wouldn't trust anybody again. Oh, so walked walk into the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, it's a turn of that there. Did you not know there was a door there? <laughs> wow. Look, Mum found something of yours. <laughs> Burn it! I think I handled it the worst out of probably all of us kids. I can remember one awful time. I was out on a date and um, the guy dropped me home and I got out of the car he went, oh, can I just use the loo quickly? And I was like, no. I said, no, no, you can't. And he went, what? I said, no, I'm sorry. And I, I'd never discussed it with him, but I said, it's just too messy, you can't. And he said, please, it can't be that messy. Let me, I just need a wee. I said, all right, just wait here a minute. And I went upstairs and cleared the toilet out. 
so that he could go to the loo. That was dreadful. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a lot of stuff, it's masses of stuff, and seeing it all spread out like this, it looks even more than it did in the house. She doesn't have long to decide, as the warehouse has only been rented for two weeks. I don't know how I'm going to go through it, but I will have to. So, I'm lucky it didn't disappear on the way here. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. That's holiday snaps from seven, eight years ago. I forgot I even had these. That's me and Cameron when he was about four in Portugal. It feels good to have the space back, even just to see the table again. You can touch, you can open your arms up without touching anything and you're not afraid of walking because there's nothing's going to fall on top of you. <laughs> like, even though the floor's filthy and needs a wash, I can still walk around. But I haven't stopped being a hoarder. It's still in my brain. The stuff is still, you know, all turning around in my brain and I'm, you know, thinking, oh, that and that and that. But I'm really, I'm really hoping that we continue because I don't want to stop and I can almost breathe again. Time to get to school, Cameron. Bye, sweetheart. Have a good day. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ma. Hi. You're moving in. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a bit much, isn't it? Vasula's sons, Johnny and Andy, have come to help their mother sort out what to keep. I think we should do a skim. You just right, go, then. this, 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 I'm going to keep. All right. And then we'll just shift it out of the way. I don't feel quite ready to get rid of a lot of the stuff yet. So I, I, it's difficult for me to say, I don't want that, when I still really want everything, but I don't want to take it back home either. Can you just say what you see that you want to keep, so that you can see? This, definitely. No, I don't know. What is it? What's in it? Nothing. It's empty. Well, where's the set that was in it? Well, quickly then. Look, you, you want to have a look at that? I want that, because I like that. Definitely want to keep that. Yes. Yeah. Pyrex. They're a dime a dozen, yeah? Um, somebody wanted a lasagna dish that I know. We can go to the shop and buy one, then. <laughs> these are broken, these speakers. And they're mine as well, so can I throw them away, please? Scrap Wait, metal. Where were they? In the pram. The only reason I, I have speakers is because they've got good magnets on them. Yeah, but there's can always... Can I have them? There's always Can I have speakers. the magnets and not the speakers? If she's asking me if she can keep them, then I'm going to say no. It's because they're mine. But the thing is, that these things that she wants to keep, that, you know, she'll, they'll just go back into the house and they'll just sit there again forever, and she'll never, ever do with them the things she has in mind, like with those speakers, she wants the magnets out of them or something to pick up paper clips. Is that what she yeah. says? <laughs> and if we ever come to that, we could just buy her a, another magnet, you know. Or another that's speaker what she really wants. She really wants. <laughs> <laughs> She'd rather yeah. buy a speaker and dismantle it and yeah, take the magnet it. out in order to pick up some paper. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking me if you can have my magnets? Because no, the answer is no. If it's up to me, then the answer is no. OK, that's not very helpful. What do you mean, not helpful? They're mine. I'm keeping them. OK. That's not very good, is it? Don't let it get to you. They're my speakers. You don't need them. Do you? No. No. I don't want my mum to be upset, but that is a barrier that sort of 
needs to to be softened up a little bit, you know. You can't just give in to her because yeah. she wants to keep everything. Mum? Yeah? It's all right. Look at me. Do you want to take five? If we're going to make any progress, it's going to be hard for her. She knows it's going to be hard. Yeah. She's agreed to do it. This is the uh, speed that you can go at. It's there's, not. There's not. There's nothing. If you want to keep something. This is the something. speed you can go at if you're not got any feelings towards the things that you're looking at. So we're sorting out the, the what is absolute shite from what you can use. All right. No. Done. Not done. There's all of that to sort. Look. Can you look at the stuff that you've still got to sort? That whole end needs to be cleared today. So this is futile, what you're doing. So you have to decide what's important to you. It's important for me that you don't shout at me. I'm not shouting, this is talking. It's important to don't me Don't try and make me out to be a bad guy, because I'm not a bad guy. All right, let me talk then. It's important to me that you don't shout at me. It's important to me that you let me have my thoughts. And it's important to me that we do do it quickly too. So do it quickly. I was expecting my mum to be much more, you know, ready to get rid of stuff at this stage, you know. It feels almost like she's made a choice. She'd rather have the stuff than us round, round her house. Especially with my little brother, who still lives there. And you'd think that, you know, him having to live in all that crap and all that rubbish surrounding him, and you'd think that that would be enough of an incentive for her to clear up. Everything Vasula wants to save will be stored in a locker. And there's loads of space. <laughs> what are you talking Why about? You it sit won't down? fit. Have a seat. <laughs> I feel right at home. You can use it. We'll just load it all in around you. And then you can, you can have it. This is just how home is, really. Yeah. All of this stuff, plus the stuff that's still not yet sorted in the warehouse, is all just from living room and dining room, and it all has to go back into the house because you're keeping it. But compare what's here to what's going. There's the same, I'd say 50-50. Yeah. No, 50 -50. I'd say 50-50. If you put all this back into those two rooms, obviously they wouldn't be functional as rooms. They would just be storage units again. She feels like she's you know, making a lot of sacrifices and that we're pushing her into it. But actually, she's not making enough sacrifices, really, because there's still a huge amount of stuff here. That's the last thing. Cool. I feel differently on different days and even different minutes. You know, one minute I'm thinking, oh, throw the lot away. It wouldn't matter if everything was gone, but the moment passes, and then I'm again, you know, oh. Increasingly concerned at the amount Vasula still wants to hang on to, Jasmine is keen for the process not to stall. It's been completely trial and error. Everything I've done with my mum, I've been feeling my way along, making mistakes along the way, finding out what works, what doesn't work, and it's definitely a journey of discovery. Jasmine's travelling to New York to meet American author Jessie Scholl, who recently wrote a book about her own mother's hoarding. I read the book, and there were a lot of similarities in there with me and my mum. It wasn't identical, there's a few, you know, slightly different things, but you read it, and you, you can just relate to it. Like Jasmine, Jessie struggled for years to combat her mother's hoarding. But three years ago, she decided never to set foot in her mum's house again. For Jasmine, it's a chance to explore a totally different way of dealing with her mother's condition. Because you want so badly to be able to help your parents, and you know, we all want our parents to live in a safe and healthy environment, so we want more than anything to be able to fix it. It's so hard to kind of jump forward and out of denial, and I think the only way you really can get through it is by going through it. 
attempts. You have to try and fail. You know, and that's really the only way that you can get to the point of kind of letting go. You know, I still am the daughter of a hoarder and I still have a mother with a mental illness and you know, I always will, but I guess I can choose right now how much it's affecting my life and right now it's not. I tried so many times I cleaned her house and not just that, but I spent years, you know, trying to convince her over the phone, oh, clean one room a week, thinking, like, I just needed the one magic plan, and if I could, fi if I could figure it out, um, you know, her mind would flip and she wouldn't be a hoarder She'd anymore. She'd realize, have this revelation and go, oh, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't okay. it be nice yeah. to be able to sleep in my bed and right. cook in my kitchen? Exactly. And... No, after trying for years and years and being infested with, you know, a parasite, scabies, twice. I just had to say, that's it, I'm done. And I would probably have given up a long time ago if, it, if I didn't have the motivation of my youngest brother. Right. To, you know, mm -hmm. to make the environment better for him. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. I've thought about this a lot in terms of hoarding, and often I think the hoarder's anxiety and the hoarder's comfort level should not be the priority. It should be the, the child, people, people it's who the, live with them. It's the people who live with them, and it's the people who are really affected because, yes, getting rid of this, you know, millionth copy of this paperback book might cause the hoarder anxiety, but how much anxiety does it cause the child who's living there? So I think that... Yeah, you're right. It's not very balanced, is it's it? It's not balanced at I, all. I hadn't really thought about it in that way. If she ever gets to the point where the progress stops, um, you know, you might have to just take your brother out and have him live with you. Um, yeah, which I would be more than happy to do. It would be a lot easier than, yeah. than trying to clear it out. Well, why not just do that? Because he wants to be at home with his mum. Oh, and my mum wants him to be at home with her. Yeah. I, mean, I hate to say it, but I've just never seen someone not hoard anymore. Discouraging, isn't it's it? It's very, very discouraging. I might be sounding really blinkered because all the facts and the statistics and everything there are plain for anyone to see, glaringly obvious, and she's never going to recover, and I might as well just give up. Well, that's just bollocks. You know, that is just not an option so even if I am being blinkered and even if I am wasting my time I can't think of a, anything I would prefer to be doing right now I would just I just want to crack on with it and you know only time will tell for Jasmine, there's a lot more at stake than there was for me, and that is because she has a 13-year-old brother living there. Um, I mean, that really changes everything. So if I were Jasmine, I think I probably would be doing the exact same thing. It's the final day of clearing at the warehouse. Good morning. Anything Vasula hasn't set aside to keep will be taken away to be sold or disposed of in just a few hours. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> so what do you want us to do, Mum? Come over here and cast I your might have to stuff. have a nervous breakdown. I don't want a fancy skirt. Oh, it's yeah. not a skirt, it's a top. <laughs> I'm feeling stressed. I've taken lots of drugs. You know, medication. Can you please let me finish what I'm doing? This was my mum's fault. <laughs> so you don't have to bend your wrist. You're not going to keep it, are you? You haven't got wrist problems, have you yet? Too bad. What about this? Is this your favourite spoon? No, that's... You know what that is. That's the... <laughs> Stop taking the pee. This... I've got this at home. I've got the toy. Oh, why have you got it? I hope you haven't thrown... I've been looking for these things. I hope you haven't just put them in why the bin. Why are you saying it's so oh, And this I need. Why um, do you need it? What do you mean need? I need let's, it. Let's get this straight. <laughs> I need it to throw at Cameron. Oh. 
She's in a panic. My magic rope. And there's no real need to be because everything of any value and a lot of things of no value have already been taken out. I don't think I'd take it personally. You know, I just want to get on with it as, with as, as little stress as possible. It's like a bloody orgy in this box. <laughs> There's only one girl though. Oh, here's the rest of them. Alright, there's no Lego in there. Because I'm panicking about some things. <gasps> okay. They're coming in less than an hour, so I just want to make sure that you are prepared and you've, and you've done the most important things. You don't know what you've done, what you've thrown and what you haven't. For me, it would be better to take it slower. But I am a bit worried about letting my kids down and I'm also very concerned about my younger son. He's the one I'm worried about most. So I feel like I have to let them get the stuff moving for his sake. Right, somebody's already gone through those boxes. I know, but you but might not know that. So no, he might not know. Really want. So, can I just say, is that the top priority, or is the stuff that nobody's looked at the priority? Well, both. Well, which one first? You can't do them both first. Well, I'm doing this at the moment. I can't put them anywhere. What if I'm you're saying is, them put out. them in a different box. I'm not box. starting a new box. Look, you're all panicking, all right? No, we're not panicking. You're, you're all panicking, you're and you're making me. You have hide decided to keep everything at the last minute. It's not us no, doing anything. No, I haven't. I haven't decided saying. to keep everything. It's really going to keep this. This that, 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 that whole thing. Out Please, there it's around. something I have to work through, okay? Please. And this is these these things I'm keeping too, please. This these pictures and this lid for that box. I don't want those. My kids are all gonna beat me up if I'm not careful. They hate me because I want to check through the stuff. Does every family have random stuff like this or is it just me? I would like to keep all these action figures. Don't make me flip out. Don't flip out, love. I'm probably going to keep him too. Okay. Out of them. Just I'm telling you, you're not keeping all of these action Look. figure dolls. Just you're not. Just I can't let you. Who sorted it? I know it sorted it because you said. The toys can go, except for the Lego. I didn't know the these were here. I thought they were at home. Stop screaming. I'm sorry if I'm screaming. I'm not screaming. You should hear me scream. Well, you're screeching then. All right, love. Whether or not you knew these were here, we were just following what you said. All right, I'm trying to control myself. Thank you. And I'd like you to allow me. No. I'd like you. I actually, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, I'm keeping those. If that isn't with your agreement, then we have to fall out. Okay. How much more do you want people to do for you? Alright, nothing. Yeah, so just go. Just leave. Please do me a favour, call Jasmine. I'm not going. I'm okay. not calling Jasmine. Jasmine's left because you're behaving in a way that's not dignified. What's me not dignified? I mean what I say, Mother. It's for you. We're not doing this for ourselves. You've just got to let go of it. What's important in your life? This shit? Or your family? Think about it seriously. This is plastic shit. Yeah? Your family love you. It's not worth upsetting one of your family for any of this stuff. I'd give everything that you've kept for not upsetting Jasmine for one minute. All right, I'll, I'll take a few. All right? One in ten. Two in ten. You know what I mean? How many do you really need? You're keeping these, yeah? Yeah, I haven't gone through them yet. Right. Sorry. Quickly, though, because it's time to go. Wait, 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 no, wait, 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 wait. Grab these boots. 
There you go. It's Sorry, over. Darling. Sorry, darling. One minute, Anne. Should we all just wait then? Come on. Let me get these little things, please. and gardens. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not good housekeeping. <laughs> you alright, darling? I think you've done an amazing job. No, you have. I'm rubbish. You have. I'm rubbish at it. You need the patience of an angel to be able to deal with this. I just feel like... I feel like I'm going to find joy. I'm so glad it's going. <laughs> My kids have lost their patience with me. I don't blame them. They've lived with me forever, and but I'm, I'm still the same person, you see, and it's difficult for me to be able to let go as easily as I'd like to. In two weeks, Vasula has got rid of half the contents from her living and dining rooms. Good riddance. Indeed. That was the best clearance we've ever done. All that stuff's gone. Oh, what a relief. Three weeks later, the momentum continues as they clear the garden, hallway, a toilet, bedroom for Fasula, and a room for Cameron. I'm not going to go out and buy things to replace the things that have gone, unless I really need them. That's the idea, but whether it works, I hope it works, I really do. But after a lifetime of hoarding, there are still two flights of stairs, the landings, the bathroom, three bedrooms, and the kitchen still to sort. I feel just tired of it. I did say to her last week, we can just stop. And she just said she didn't want to stop. I even asked Cameron to come and live with me so I could stop, so I could just not have to worry about it anymore. And he said no as well. Mm. How long do you think it's going to take us to do this kitchen? Quite a while because everything's dirty, everything Got is a dishwasher. out of place. I'm going to be battling with myself the whole time. You know, I'm throw it away. No, keep it the right way. No, keep it. We keep this. Oh, it's up to you. Well, we keep it for now. I always wanted to fix the house and to fix my mum and. I don't think I'll be able to fix my mum. But she's my mum and I love her and I'll never give up on her. Can we keep that? Where's the keep box? Oh, thank you. 